Hey, this is Pastor Mark Francis, Ridgecrest Baptist Church in Durham. Question, how does God want you to treat your mama? Uh, you may be young and living in a house where your mom is, is uh, there. Uh, you may be older and you've moved out of your house and your mother's still alive. You may be at some age where your mother has already passed and is no longer here. But regardless of your age and stage and where your mother is at this point, how does God want you to treat your mother uh, in order to glorify Him and to, to follow how He would have you to do that? So as we get started, uh, uh, website for our church, ridgecrest.cc. Uh, I'm Mark Francis, the pastor, as I said a moment ago. Glad for you to catch up with me with an email. Get those uh, from time to time. Always good to hear from folks. So this is the addendum, part two, if you will, of the message from yesterday here at Ridgecrest, Mother's Day, because of the number of children we had for child dedication, because of dealing with the Supreme Court uh, leak of, of, the, of the brief, uh, the message did not conclude in the time allotted. So I'm coming here now to just repeat the first part of the message and then move into the rest of what I'm going to call from Proverbs, uh, do's and don'ts of how to treat your mother. And this is applicable for you, no matter what age or stage you are, no matter what age or stage your mom might be. So, so what does God want of you and I that, we, uh, that, that, we, that would guide us to treat our mothers? Would you pray with me? Lord, it's a little unusual to preach a Sunday morning message here on video, but I'm thankful for the technology. And I ask now that as we look into Proverbs, look into your word, would you give us wisdom, Lord, that would set us apart uh, to love our mothers and respect our mothers and treat our mothers in ways that would bless them, honor you, and bring glory to your name and spread the good news of Jesus around the world. As we pray in his name right now, amen. Okay, do's and don'ts. Uh, do, number one, just to repeat uh, there, there at the beginning, do learn from your mama. Your mother has much to teach you from life experiences. Hopefully, uh, your mother has good things to teach you, godly things to teach you, biblical things to teach you, including uh, being a part of a church and applying God's Word to your life. But even if you have the worst imaginable type of mother, there are still some good things you can learn because even in the worst circumstances, we can learn valuable lessons of how not to do things. So, so listen to the words of Proverbs twice. In Proverbs 1 in verse number 8 and Proverbs 6 in verse number 20, there's this phrase in Proverbs that says, forsake not your mother's teaching. Your mother is going to teach you some things, hopefully good and godly. Uh, don't forsake them. Don't ignore them. Don't turn away from them. And, uh, and, and some mothers teach, again, wisely. Some teach shamefully. Chapter 6 of Proverbs goes on to say, after saying forsake not your mother's teaching, it goes on to say, bind them, godly teaching from your mother, God, bind these teachings on your heart always and tie them around your neck. So binding means a permanent attachment. In your heart refers to the inward impact that God's Word has in your life. An outward necklace would, would indicate an outward demonstration to anybody who looks at that which is valuable hanging around your neck, that which is important to you hanging around your neck, and that which identifies you as a, as a person of godliness. So all of that ties in there. But then notice in verse 22 of Proverbs 6, it gives us some benefits of taking God's word, putting it into our hearts, and wearing it as an adornment around our neck, symbolically, of course. It says, when you walk, as you go about your life, these godly teachings will lead you. They will give you direction of all the paths in life that, that we have to make choices on every single day. We either come to a crossroads or we come to one of those spaghetti-type intersections you see on the, on the highway around major cities where you could, in a heartbeat, you could go any number of, of different directions. So, uh, so when you walk, it says God's Word will guide you. When you lie down or when you sleep at night, God's Word will watch over you and protect you. And when you awake, when you get up in the morning, when you start your day, God's Word, it says here, will talk with you. The Word of God that we put into our minds, into our hearts, as we go about our life, has a way of, of being reinforced and brought back into our minds and into our consciousness in moments where we have to make decisions, in moments where you may be sitting at school, you may be working uh, at your job, you may be interacting with other people. You're not even thinking about the Bible, but the Word of God in your heart is going to guide you in those steps. And hopefully, you have the kind of mom that has helped you to ingrain these things into your life. So, so learn from your mom. Not only does she teach, but she also spouts wisdom. 
uh, the, the other end of, of Proverbs chapter 31. The first nine verses is a, is a section from about this king. We don't know where he's a king at. And this king named Lemuel, which we don't know anything else about in all the Bible. But it says there in, in, uh, in verse 1 of, of, of uh, Proverbs 31, the words of King Lemuel, an oracle that his mother taught him. So here's an example, even of the person of the highest prominence still being taught by his mother. Moms, I hope this encourages you. And for all of us, no matter who we are, I hope it encourages us to listen to the wisdom of our moms. In verses 1 to 9, mom basically is telling Lemuel three pieces of wisdom that are applicable for you if you're a king or if you're a pauper. No matter what stage of life you are, whether you are male or female, these words of wisdom are impeccable. Here's what she says. Verse 3, avoid sexually immoral people. Avoid them. Stay away from them. Don't get lured in by the song. Don't get lured in by the book. Don't get lured in by what people are saying. Don't get lured in to what's on the movie or what's on the television or what's on the internet. Don't get lured in because it will snap you up and drag you down. By way of, of, of advertisement, May 22nd here at Ridgecrest Baptist Church, 4 p.m. until 5.30 p.m. in our gym, we're having a seminar dealing with the issue of pornography. This is not something that is that is designed for people that are struggling with pornography, although it will help. It's designed as an information, information about pornography, information about what pornographers are trying to do and what pornography does to us and how we can be strengthened and set free by our relationship with Christ. We have a guest speaker, uh, Professor uh, uh, Scott Hildreth from Southeastern Seminary, has researched, written books, and he has uh, given this uh, demonstration seminar and other occasions. So we're looking forward to Scott being here with us. I look forward to you being here with us. Bring anybody you can, children, uh, adults, parents, friends, people that are struggling with pornography, people that just dealing with life. Every possible person will benefit from coming. May 22nd, 4 p.m., Ridgecrest Baptist Church, Durham. So anyway, so, so Lemuel's mother, the wisdom of a mother, avoids sexually immoral people. Verses 4 to 7, note the danger of alcohol. Alcohol can drag you down just as much as sexual immorality can do. And uh, uh, being mindful that since Proverbs speaks so much about alcohol, in the coming weeks, I also will be bringing the topic of alcohol up, how to handle alcohol uh, as, we, as we go forward in, in worship. And then verses 8 and 9, promote justice for all. As a king, Lemuel was in a position to, to do favors for the rich and the powerful. He was in a position to stomp on the needs of the poor and the, and, and the, and the outcast. But his mama says to him, listen, everybody's equal. Take care of everybody, the, the powerful and the pauper as well. So learn from your mama. That's the longest of the do's and don'ts. Number two, don't. Don't act foolish. Don't act foolish. Foolish. Don't embarrass your mom. Uh, when, when you act in foolish ways, it embarrasses and shames your mom. Uh, when you do that, one, it affects her sorrow. She's sorrowful when a child acts in shameful ways. Uh, chapter 10 and verse 1 of Proverbs, A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is a sorrow to his mother. None of us want the disapproval of our mothers. None of us want to see our mother cry or disappointed in us. And so so it's an encouragement here to do the good and godly thing so that our mothers will not be sorrowed. But acting foolish also activates your own anger. Uh, for some reason, those who are guilty of being foolish and guilty of a lot of things wind up blaming other people. And uh, chapter 15 and verse 20, it says a wise, uh, it says a foolish man despises his mother. He's angry at his mother. His mother, it says here, didn't do anything but he is simply foolish, and it does take a foolish person to innocently despise or get angry at a mother. Chapter 23 and verse 22 says, Do not despise your mother when she is old. When, when, when she gets old and is needed, after providing for you in your growing up years and providing for you godly teaching, providing for you food and clothing and all the things you have, now that she's old and she's in need, don't be foolish and turn her out. Don't be foolish and ignore her. And then there's her bitterness. When you determine to act foolish, it can make your mother not only sorrowful towards you, but also bitter uh, as well. Uh, chapter 17, verse 25. A foolish son is bitterness to her who bore him. When we act foolishly, son or daughter, both apply. When we act foolishly, it can make our mothers bitter towards us because they are 
hurt to the core and can be turned against uh, how we are. So uh, don't act foolish. Number three, don't abandon your mother. We've kind of touched on this already. When she's old, foolish person will despise his mother, but, but don't abandon your mom. In chapter 19, verse 26 says, He who does violence to his father and chases away his mother is a son who brings shame and reproach. Uh, violence to the father, maybe that's on Father's Day, but here it speaks of chasing away the mother by neglect, by words, by actions, by anger, by driving her out of the house, by, by taking stuff that, that, that is not yours, but, but uh, because you think uh, it's your turn to have the stuff, whatever it might be. But, but when, you, when you do those things, uh, it absolutely uh, is, is a foolish thing, a terrible thing that should not be done. So that's number, number three, don't abandon your mother. Now, number four, don't, <laughs> don't curse your mama. Don't curse your mama. Don't, don't talk bad about her. And don't curse her to her face. Uh, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12, part of the Ten Commandments. You may know this very well. It says there in Exodus 20, Ten Commandments, Honor your father and your mother. That you may have a long life. That life may go well for you. There's a blessing ascribed to honoring fathers and mothers. And in, uh, in, uh, in, in Proverbs 20 and verse 20, it says, If one curses his father or mother, his lamp will be put out in other, utter darkness. Darkness is a picture, a symbol, illustration of being apart from God. God is light, and where God is, it is light. And where God is not, there is darkness. And when, when we choose to, to curse, when we choose to, to, to disrespect our parents, mothers as well, then, then we're putting ourselves away from the presence of God. Interestingly, Exodus 20, honor your father and your mother, and the light of God will shine. Proverbs 20, don't, uh, don't, 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 don't curse your mom. Number five on our list, eight to eight altogether. Number five, do give your mom reason to rejoice. Mothers love to rejoice over their children. And uh, so, so do that for your mom. Chapter 23 and verse 25, it says, let your father and mother be glad. Let them be glad. And then it says, let her who bore you, that's your mom, let her who bore you rejoice. What are some things that make mothers rejoice. Whether you're a small child and, and just getting started or whether you're in school or just learning the ropes of being an adult or getting married or having your own children, whatever it is, think about ways that will make your mom rejoice. Your kindness, a test grade, an accomplishment in life, like I mentioned a moment ago, marriage or children or whatever it might be. And when your mother rejoices, just bask it in and take it because nothing makes mothers happier than being able to rejoice over their children. Number six on our list of eight, don't steal from your mama. Uh, hopefully it makes sense. Don't steal from your mama. Chapter 28 and verse 24 of Proverbs says, whoever robs his father or his mother and says that is no transgression is a companion to a man who destroys. Uh, somebody who takes things from their parents. It could be a, a, young, a young adult who seize the opportunity to take some money where mom or dad may have it stashed somewhere. It could be an older person who has an elderly parent, and while the elderly parent is still alive, will take their possessions, their money to use for themselves. And, and in either case, being able to say, uh, you know, that's not a transgression. It's it's my money. It's it's my inheritance. So it's coming to me. And it may well be, but, but, but as I've heard before uh, about dealing with our parents and those who are elderly, it's not yours unless she gives it to you or unless she leaves it to you. So unless she presents it to you as a gift or leaves it to you in her death, it is still the possession of your mom or your dad, but your mom. And so don't steal from your mom. And number seven, don't shame your mother by your actions. Don't act in ways that shame your mother. Again, a little bit of overlap from other places here in Proverbs, but chapter 29, verse 15 says, The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. The encouragement here is for all of us to submit ourselves to the directing, correcting, and uh, 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 protecting rod of the Lord, not that beats us, but that guides us. And parents are to do the same thing. When our parents don't do this, when our parents decide or determine for whatever reason, to leave us to ourselves, we can act very shamefully. And when we do, our mothers, of course, can, can, uh, can, can be shamed. 
Uh, but even if our parents determine to leave us to ourselves to act foolishly, we all get to a point where regardless of our upbringing, we determine who we're going to be. Hopefully, we determine we're going to submit ourselves to God, follow His Word, live in a godly fashion, be the person God has called us to be. Hopefully, all those things are true about us. And even if our, our mother was should be ashamed for letting us go our own way when we're young, hopefully when we grow up, we become the person God wants us to be. And when our mother might understandably be shamed by how we turned out negatively, instead she can rejoice and be glad because of the hand of God upon our lives. So don't shame your mother. And lastly, the very last one. Thanks for hanging with me. Number eight, do bless your mama. Bless her. Cause her to rejoice. Yes, that's what she does to you. But let your words, your actions, your attitudes be such that you bless your mother. It doesn't say that she has to be worthy of it. That's where Exodus 20 talks about. Honor your father and your mother, not because they're honorable, but because your honoring of them brings honor to our Heavenly Father above. That's the key. So, so, so bless your mom. Chapter 30 and verse 11 says of Proverbs, there are those who curse their fathers and do not bless their mothers. There's, there's people like that. They don't bless their mothers. They're not thankful for their mothers. They don't speak well of their mothers. They don't do any of those things. And, and the, in, the inference here is simply this. Don't be that person. Don't be the person that doesn't bless the mother. Chapter 31 and verse 28 says, Proverbs, Her children rise up and call her blessed. This, this is in response to the excellent wife and mother. And Proverbs 31 has been, has been the, 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 the standard, if you will, for how excellent wives, excellent mothers should be. And it sets a beautiful, godly picture. And in there, when the mother acts in good and godly ways, it says her children rise up and call her blessed. And certainly that's a great blessing. But we're called upon to bless our mothers, even when they don't meet the standard <clears throat> of Proverbs 31. Even when they fall short, even when they're not perfect, we're still called to bless them and to honor them. Because in doing so, it builds them up and encourages them and it honors God. And it's a great testimony of our faith and all that God does for us. So in a nutshell, that is the, the, the version of the message I did not get to at the 1030 worship service this past Sunday, yesterday here at Ridgecrest Baptist Church. I hope if anything, it's been an encouragement to you. If there's any way that we can encourage you, minister to you, or, or help you in any way, you want to reach out to us, just, just shoot me an email. Uh, right here it is. And uh, I'd be happy to talk with you, respond to you, pass you on to someone who could provide some resources for you. Uh, but just know that we want to uh, to be the kind of a church where people can go and be a part of uh, what God is doing and moving in lives and families and communities, in the lives of mothers and children and fathers and everybody else in between. Uh, we want to be that kind of a church. And we ask you and invite you to come join us in that regard. So as I conclude now, I want to invite you uh, to come be a part of what's happening at Ridgecrest Baptist Durham. Uh, we'd love to have you join us anytime uh, if you're not already a part of a church. And, uh, and just know uh, we pray God's blessings upon you. Pray with me now. Lord, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for mothers. Thank you for all they provide for us. And I want to ask right now for everyone who has been a part of our worship services yesterday or is watching now online, that uh, the desire of our hearts would be to be moms and dads that truly are honorable in the sight of God and who truly bless our children. But then as children, may we, regardless of our parents, determine to honor and bless them and live in ways that would glorify you because, Lord, what a great testimony that is. So guide us forward. Give us resources. Help us to have a heart towards you and not towards ourselves or selfishness or this world. And we'll thank you for it even now and every day in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thank